What's going on, Perform24 family? I hope you guys are crushing it. Uh, if we have not met yet, my name is Levi, um, and I run a gym called Perform24 in South Tampa, Florida. Um, and then I make YouTube videos in my garage with my internet friends. Uh, but today, we're gonna be talking about the MLB lockout. Um, specifically, how the MLB lockout is creating a ton of challenges uh, for the off-season training. Um, so it's creating challenges for us, the coaches um, and the trainers, and it's creating a lot of challenges for the players. Um, so today is February 28th, um, and we are still training Major League Baseball players, which is so crazy. Uh, there is a big meeting today. Maybe things get resolved and we get a little bit of a game plan, um, or maybe this continues for another couple weeks. So uh, we are going to be talking about the challenges that this that the lockout is creating um, and then how I am kind of helping uh, our athletes kind of resolve some of these challenges. Um, so let's dive into this. Okay, so just as a little bit of context here, um, the way the off season usually works is that at the very beginning of the off season when I'm working with a new athlete, we sit down and we go through an, a whole eval. Um, if that's a returning athlete, that eval looks different than if it's a brand new athlete. Uh, but one of the biggest parts of that eval is identifying our off-season priorities um, and then getting our timeline set. Um, and those off-season priorities and those off-season timelines are very, very interrelated, okay? Um, so we know like, hey, you know, like this, this guy's gonna be reporting on February 10th, um, and so he needs to be, he needs to have X, Y, Z goal accomplished by February 10th. Um, typically, these athletes you know, also have communication with the team. Um, and so part of that eval is also reaching out to the team or, you know, maybe a relevant coach with the team or something like that um, and connecting with them um, and just making sure that we're all on the same page. Hey, you know, I've got this guy in. Um, this is what we talked about. This is our game plan. Uh, do you guys have anything to add to that? Um, or, would the see, or would the organization like to see something different or, you know, like, like us to work on something else, you know? So we always kind of loop in a couple different opinions um, and a couple different inputs as we're building this off-season program. Um, so this off-season uh, with the lockout, uh, communication with the team has been impossible. So we can't talk to the team um, about the athletes. Uh, basically, anybody that works for the team um, is shut out. And then an even bigger problem is that we don't have our timelines. Okay, so, you know, we went through the whole off season. We trained through three or four, or sometimes even five different training phases uh, to get these guys ready for their mid-February, typical spring training go time. Um, and then mid-February rolls around and there is no, uh, there is no deadline in sight, okay? Um, and even now, a couple weeks after the original deadline, uh, we still don't have a deadline in sight. So. Uh, that puts us all kind of in like this limbo world, um, which in the training world is really, really challenging. Okay, so the example that I've been using to explain the importance of the timelines is Christmas, okay? So Christmas is a big deal to a lot of people, but even if it's not a big deal to you, you're gonna understand this analogy. Um, so, you know, Thanksgiving ends um, and December 1st hits, you know, and the music everywhere just starts to change into the Christmas music. The weather starts to change. Um, and you just start to get this vibe, right? Uh, the Christmas spirit, some may say. Um, and this is a feeling that a lot of us understand. Um, and just imagine that if you are feeling that, your body is running on this cycle, on this timeline, like this subconscious pattern. Um, and all of a sudden, Christmas doesn't come. Um, and even if you weren't looking forward to Christmas Day specifically, you can just tell that there was like this buildup for something that didn't happen, okay? Um, and that's kind of how I've been explaining like spring training uh, to some of the, like the non-professional athlete population um, and people that don't, that don't understand that world really is like there is a, these athletes live on a very tight cycle of life, okay? So they, you know, they compete all year, they take a little break, they train all year uh, to get ready for uh, competition again. And right now, like their inner clock, their subconscious patterned hardwire clock is telling them that it's time to go, but there is nowhere to go. There's nothing to do, right? Um, and so it just puts like this weird like damper um, on the situation and what that can do um, so in the off-season world, like we are, we're, we program for months and months and months to peak right now in February. Well, now that there's no competition time, we have to make some pretty hard adjustments. So we've been talking about a, a handful of things um, in the gym recently with our guys. Um, and so these are the, the types of things that we're talking about. So one, if we didn't accomplish the initial priority list, 
now we have more time to accomplish it, okay? So now we need to double down on some of these priorities that we are working on um, and really use this extra time wisely. Now for the guys that did accomplish those goals, like we had, um, like we've got some guys that really, really worked hard uh, this off season and they really truly were ready to go mid-February. So now what we have to do with them is that we have to almost go through like a re-evaluation process um, and basically just try to shift their mindset to being like, okay, those priorities are done. We can check that box and we need to move on to other things. You've ever been through a really hard, challenging, lengthy training period, you know that it just becomes a grind. There's only so many days and so many weeks and so many months uh, that you can be consistently sore from before you just start to like, oh my gosh, like I hate this. Like burnout is real. Um, and I think a lot of the guys I've been working with over this off season, um, they are certainly experiencing burnout from the training um, in the last couple weeks. It's really challenging to keep them engaged. Um, so one thing that we've done, um, we did go through a gigantic like deload week. This is probably the biggest deload week that I've ever programmed for some people. Uh, one guy in particular, I had him train on Monday. Um, he trained on Tuesday. We modified his Tuesday workout and then I literally told him, I was like, okay, I don't wanna see you until next Monday. This is the day, this is the week that you were initially supposed to report to spring training. You've been training five days a week now since early November, you need to take a couple days out of the weight room. So I literally sent him home um, and then we kicked it off uh, the following Monday, uh, which was you know last week with a completely new phase. So we utilized a deload week on the week that they were initially supposed to report um, just to kind of recalibrate their off season training. Um, and then another thing that I've been doing is that I have, I have like really hard shifted their training goals. So again, a typical off season kind of starts in like a general prep phase. Uh, we go through like a little hypertrophy, a little max phase maybe, and then we get into our explosive and our speed strength phases as they're getting into spring training. Well, we can't just like extend the speed strength phase, especially since we don't know how long we're extending it for, you know? Extending a speed strength phase for another week might not be that big of a deal, uh, but we can't spend six or eight weeks in a speed strength phase um, that just doesn't really make any sense. You're not gonna get a lot of benefit out of that, um, and there's probably better ways to utilize our time. So um, we've kind of like reset you know, this is kind of getting into the nuts and bolts and nerd stuff of the programming side, but we've kind of like reset our programming methodology or our, our programming phases a little bit. Um, we're not going into an in-season program because these guys aren't in season, right? They're not competing every day. They're not traveling. Um, they're not dealing with the team stress. So this isn't an in-season program, but it's almost like a, an intro to a second off season. Um, I've thrown a whole bunch of new stuff um, into their training programs just to keep it fresh. Um, we kind of got out of like the baseball specific stuff for a couple weeks. Again, just more like general athleticism type of things, um, just to keep it engaging, right? Like I said, burnout is real. Um, and so if I can kind of mitigate some of that burnout, if I can engage them in a different way, um, you know, challenge their bodies in a way that it hasn't been challenged over the last four to five months, it's gonna help ease that burnout feeling. And then on the flip side, we can't deviate too far uh, from like the off season peak because literally today we could get the word that, yeah, they're ready to go actually. Uh, the lockout ends, a new deal starts um, and all everybody is reporting on Wednesday. Um, so we can't like really drift too far uh, from being ready, uh, but we do have to change the game a little bit and then introduce some new variables into the off season. So, um, it's, it's a really, really challenging time in the training world, um, working with these guys to keep them progressing, to keep them engaged, uh, to keep them ready all simultaneously. That's a really fine line to work with. Um, and then obviously on the player side, if you are a player, if you know a player, uh, man, it is a challenge. Okay, I feel for you guys. Um, it's a, this is a really difficult thing. And then I guess just before we do wrap this up, um, it is also very important to note uh, that the skill work to, for these guys is super, super important right now. Uh, for them not being able to go to their spring training facilities and to get time on the field or on the mound, um, that is very challenging. Luckily, uh, here in South Tampa, we live in an area that attracts a lot of baseball players. Um, and so they have put in a lot of effort on their own uh, to kind of coordinate times at fields in the area uh, where they can all go and get time on the field together, whether that's hitting or pitching or fielding or whatever. But uh, I've been out there a couple times with them on the field, um, and it's, it's almost like a practice, which 
is crazy because it's a player-led practice that these guys are going through. Um, there's no coaches involved. There's no like. There's none of that coaching dynamic involved. It's just guys out there trying to get better um, and trying to you know trying to do what they can to make sure that they are ready to go when the time comes. All right, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. I just wanted to jump on here and just kind of like spitball some of this stuff and kind of lay out the challenges uh, that we're all facing here because it is a very unique situation and it is really tough. Uh, so props to the players that have been able to stay on it um, and have been able to stay uh, working and stay active and stay engaged and motivated. Um, this is definitely not the time to take your foot off the gas pedal, uh, but it's a challenge, okay? It's a grind. This is a very, very long off season. This is probably the longest strictly training time that any of these guys have ever had in their entire life. Okay, so that's a that's a long time to, for them to be training uh, multiple, multiple times a week. Um, so props to the athletes that have been able to stay in it. Props to the other coaches that have been able to adjust appropriately. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully we get back to it soon. Hopefully we see these guys on the field uh, sooner rather than later. That's going to wrap up today's video. If you guys do like videos like this, please let me know. Um, a thumbs up or a subscribe or a comment down below always goes a long way. Uh, but that's going to wrap up today's video. In the meantime, always train hard, live full, and I'll see you in the next one.